Coming up this week... It's a good looking guitar, isn't it? Come on, you've got to admit, that is a good looking guitar. Did I mention I got a £40 discount for the dodgy pot? It's just a simple fix. We can review it and we can just fix it. It'll be easy, won't it? You should never take my word for anything, by the way. If you don't like Epiphone 335, you might like a Gibson SG. This is my 2013 Gibson SG Joe, or a Fender Amp. It's a Fender Blues DeVille 4x10 with the Arnico Blues speakers. Just quickly now, this has gone on way longer than I expected it to. Right, let's get cracking. This week we'll start with the 335. I've got another Epiphone ES335. It's a good looking guitar, isn't it? Come on, you've got to admit, that is a good looking guitar. Vintage Sunburst. Yeah. Well, I got this because it was a bargain. This is fantastic value, this guitar. These guitars, I mean, I'm talking in general about the Epiphone ES335. Um, whatever, you, whatever you think of them, they're still, the retail price of these is still, I think it's $599 on the Epiphone website. It's about £469 in the UK. Now, I got this for £399. So the deals are out there. And I was just thinking, oh, God, you know, even for 450 quid. I mean, look, it's a lot of guitar for the money. That's what I'm saying. It's a lot of guitar for the money. You know, even if you don't like ES335s, which, which I have been heard to, to, to say before, that I don't really even like ES335s. But I saw this for £399. And I, and I thought, well, I've got, I've got to get that. I kind of had to anyway. <laughs> had to. Yeah, I had, a, I had to get it. That's, a, that's an excuse we use, isn't it, guys? I had to get this because recently I've reviewed uh, these two. The Sheraton 2 Pro on my left, camera right, and the ES339 on my right, camera left. So, of course, already lots of you know, comments uh, what's it like compared to the 335 on, on both of those films? So it was my duty to get another 335 to find out. So comparisons with those will be coming, not today, but in subsequent films in the future. Today, what we'll do is we'll do, well, you know, I mean, I've done a, a review on the, uh, the 335 before and a, and a serious, <laughs> and a serious, uh, Series, a serious series, yeah, a serious series, upgrading it and uh, and rewiring it, changing the pickups and the wiring, and as as much as, and other bits as well. I'll put a link in the description box. There's five episodes, full on review, rewiring. It's hilarious because through that series, I learned how to. Uh, well, hopefully, I learned how to rewire a. A semi-hollow guitar, um, you know, it, 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 you know, it didn't go off without a hitch. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll chuck a clip in. I've just pulled the socket out. Twat. What I will say at this point is, if you're considering uh, doing this, don't. It's just. It's just not worth it. It's not worth the effort. Get an EQ pedal instead. A lot easier. So that was a lot of fun, as you can as you can probably tell. And I did swear that I'd never do that again. However, if you if you saw last week, you will know that this guitar, this one here, this brand new, 
Epiphone ES335 arrived with faulty pot. This happened. Or nothing. Pretty much nothing's happened. That's where the problem is, isn't it? Because if you're in the centre, if one's not working, it kills the lot, doesn't it? Fucking ridiculous, isn't it? It's going back. <laughs> it's going straight back, unfortunately. But rather than send it back, I said I was going to send it back, but rather than send it back, I thought, no, I know how to do this now. It's just a simple fix. So what we'll do is we'll hang on to it so that this week, where we are now this week, we can, um, we can review it and we can just fix it. It'll be easy, wouldn't it? Now we know what we're doing. So that's the plan for today. I'm going to do a, a, you know, a brief review. I will go through all the specs again because it's been a while since we looked at the other one. So I'll go through all the weights and measures and then we'll take it apart and we'll fix it, put it back together, plug it in, play it and have a good old jam and see if I like this one any better than I, I did the last one, really. I mean, I'm already very turned on by the look of this thing. I like it. So maybe, maybe this one's different. Maybe this is, this will change my mind. So let's find out. We'll get on with it. Um, specs. So just like the Gibson version, this is made of layered maple, top, back and sides, and it's got a maple centre block. The neck, it doesn't say on the Epiphone website what the neck's made out of. I'm pretty sure it's mahogany. Maybe someone can confirm that. It doesn't actually state it. So um, I can't be sure, but I'm pretty sure. I can't be sure, but I'm pretty sure the neck's made of mahogany. It's got a rounded C profile, which is pretty nice. Um, let's go straight into the uh, neck profile and measurements and have a look at that. Okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. Uh, yeah, it's a nice feeling neck. Um, it is obviously got this poly finish uh, all over the guitar. It's, it's a polyurethane finish. Uh, it looks nice, but it's obviously not silky smooth like some of the competition, really. Like the Sire, I think, has got a real nice, slick, silky slick neck, hasn't it? People keep saying, you've got to get a Sire H7. They're brilliant. I will, I will try one soon. I'll get one soon and I'll compare it with this because everyone's banging on about how good they are. Can't be that good, surely. We'll find out later. This, back to this. <laughs> Laurel, yeah, Indian laurel fingerboard on this. Looks all right. Medium jumbo frets. Uh, obviously, binding on the neck. Same as the Gibson, same really. Pretty, I'm going to say, yeah, correct, correct <laughs> copy of the Gibson original, isn't it? So, you know, vintage binding all the way around there. No binding in the F holes. A few people pointed that out when I did the 339 review that Gibson ESs don't have binding in the F holes as if I'd made a terrible faux pas because I said there isn't any binding in the F holes. So sorry about that. This has got a nice, a nice, well, it's got paint in them. At least this one's got paint in them. Black, nice, looks nice. Looks nice. You can see, you can see little tooling marks. So it's pretty authentic, inspired by Gibson. QC, I suppose. See, I hadn't noticed anything wrong with this at all. It, it all, you know, everything lines up. There's no gaps anywhere <laughs> between the binding and the neck. 
you know, the fingerboard. You know what I mean, guys. Good job. Good job. It's got a Graphtech new bone nut on this. Epiphone. Yeah, I, you know, I said Epiphone Deluxe Tuners because that's in the spec. These are Wilkinson Deluxe Tuners. Um, we discovered Wilkinson Deluxe Tuners when we reviewed the the Ebony Flying V not very long ago. And it, it appears that they're, they're putting Wilkinson branded tuners on a lot of their guitars now. Says Epiphone in the specs, Wilkinson. I'm pretty sure they're the same. They're probably the same, are they? I don't know if they're the same. Anyway, they're using Wilkinson Deluxe tuners now on Epiphones, clearly. There you go. But they look great. And they, well, I, I'm going to assume they work great. I haven't really done very much with this guitar yet, so I can't claim to know that. But I'm guessing they work great. So we'll find out in a little bit. Uh, when we um, put some new strings on, before we do that, of course, we've got uh, well, we've got to take these ones off, and um, we'll take the pickups out and have a look at the pickups, and then before we uh, take the readings and stuff, we'll 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 fix the pot because um, it needs fixing, doesn't it? So I suppose now is where we actually start in earnest uh, getting into some kind of trouble, I suppose. Well, let's find out. <laughs> yeah, let's get stuck in. But before we go any further, let's weigh it. Seven pound nine ounces. Which is, of course, 3.44 kilos. So, yeah, under eight pounds. We like that. Epiphone lock tone stop tail piece of course and and bridge so these tend to not fall off because they they got a little device that holds them in place haven't they clips I've got to get back on there. get back on so I leave those on if I can because it avoids messing with the action. Not that I've even looked at the action, so it's not a big deal that. This, of course, is the import size uh, posts. Six mil, this one. Whereas USA is four mil, isn't it? I think I got that right, haven't I? You should never take my word for anything, by the way. Uh, plastic. Always take the plastic off the pickups. I'm keeping this one now anyway. I got, did I mention, I got a £40 discount for the dodgy pot. So, I definitely own this now. Um, um, yeah, right, that's me thinking what we're going to do next. Well, we're going to, well, we're going to actually just have a closer look at the, the board. Now we've got the strings off, there's not much more to see. It's got a nice, clean enough frets. I haven't really played this one yet. So I can't say for sure if there's any problems. Have I played it? Do you know, I can't remember. I don't think I have. But anyway, frets look fine. There's no, there's no sharp ends or anything that, I, that are obvious. And I'd be very surprised. I'd be surprised if there were any problems. My my experience of Epiphones and most guitars these days is they don't have any issues. But I've said before, the climate here in the UK is pretty pretty fair. It's really hot here at the moment in the UK. <laughs> you know. It's approaching 30 degrees, but that's nothing, is it, compared to where you, some of you live. For us, oh, it's a scorcher. We're having a scorching summer, which is good. Lots of motorcycling at the moment, which is good. Um, but, yeah, it's, and it's fine. Sorry, I'm waffling. Frets, no problem with the frets. As far as I can tell, 
bridge doesn't fall off. Let's undo the pickups. I think we'll take the, the take that off as well. Yeah, I think we'll take this off as well. Because we need to get to this pot now. Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's get on with it. Stop waffling, Carl. Get on with it. Right, uh, Alnico Classic Pro pickups, these. There you go. So this is the solid block. You can see the, the neck tenon there. And um, yeah, that's what that looks like. There's obviously just a, a channel there. So that's all solid, all solid there. And let's just have a look at the back of this pickup while we're here. And this is uh, Alnico Classic Pro Nickel for the cover, Humbucker HB Neck. And C, we learn, thanks to someone, several of you, that C most likely stands for coaxial cable, which is what braided cable's called. So, yeah, I'm going with this. We've cracked the code, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to just pop that back in there. We'll have a quick look at the bridge one. Oh, now it's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? That's a good saying, isn't it? I like that. That's the big old access hole. That's big, that. That's good news if you're going to take all the pots out, um, which we're not going to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's good news, but it's not going to help us because uh, <laughs> I'll tell you why in a minute. Let's just do this first. Alnico Classic Pro Nickel for a nickel cover. Humbucker Bridge C for coaxial. Right. Let's pop that back. So I've got to fix this pot here if you missed that earlier. I'll show you why. I'll plug it in and I'll show you what the fault is now. Right. I've got a live amp. I'm going to plug it in and show you what the problem is. <laughs> What's the betting it's going to work fine now? <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Right. <laughs> oh. There's a fault there, look, I'll show you. Believe it. Can you believe it? I didn't imagine it, you saw it earlier. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Dear. I don't know if that's good news or bad news. Do I risk just leaving it and not? It was clearly not working before. I've got it on camera. You saw it. Now. It's nothing to do with the pickups, is it? Well, I'll be blowed. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know what? <laughs> Let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. I think it's a saying. It was broken, and now it's not. So, we'll... <laughs> we'll... What will we do? I'm not going to, okay, let me turn the amp off for a minute. Because of the fall, here it is again. That's what was happening. I thought it's probably a short. You know, these, these things, they stuff the wiring in and if, if 
two of the wrong wires touch, problems occur. And my guess was that's what that was. It might, however, have been a, a, a bit of dirt in the pot. And for some reason, I haven't used it. But for some reason, that's cleared now. Anyway, fingers crossed it's fixed itself and I got a £40 off for that. Don't tell anyone that it's all right now, will you? Okay, well, right, well, this will be a laugh because what we'll do now is we'll put it back together. We'll put some strings on and we'll plug it in and then see, see, what's, see if it's still fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right, that's it, isn't it? We've done it. Oh no, well, I'll tell you what we can do now. We'll take some pickup readings. So let's start on the bridge if it's still working. <laughs> yeah, it is. 7.90 kilo ohms. And that's uh, inductance is 4.6 Henry's. And then if we flip over to the neck, are we getting 7.65 K? And the inductance is yeah, 3.99 Henry's. And the middle reading is 3.88K. So they're definitely still working at this point. And those, you know, they're quite sort of quite vintagey readings, aren't they? Under around about 8K. Okay, well, what I'll do is put some strings on it and plug it in and see if it's still working. So, yeah, let's do that. That's what it sounds like unplugged. It sounds all right, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm hesitating because last time I did this, when I had the Cherry 335, such a long time ago, when I got to this part, I thought, I said, oh no, that sounds a little bit dead. It didn't, it didn't sound like it was resonating. Well, it didn't resonate with me, so, but, um, Already, this one's uh, better, I think. This is the moment of truth. <laughs> Let's see if it's still working. It was a moment ago. Haha, <laughs> it still is. And that is on the bridge pickup, the one that was faulty before. Sounds promising, doesn't it? No pedals on. On the board, I've got the soul food and the rat on the board still today. And I'll show you if I tread on them. Same amp as always, Princeton 65. Yeah, it sounds pretty good, look. That's with the volume cranked. Let's just dial back the neck for a second. That's the thing about noodling, you kind of start and then you think, well, I haven't even thought about that. I think that's the danger with noodling. You just think, well, you just think if, sometimes your fingers just do it. And I think, well, that sounds, while I'm doing it, I think, what the fuck am I doing? That, sound, that must sound shit. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> 
And, and I suppose we won't know really until we play it back. Uh, but that's what was happening then. I was just doing that and I, and I don't know why I was doing it even. It was kind of like, like they got a mind of their own. <laughs> if you actually think about it, you think, <laughs> there you go. If you think about it, that happens. <laughs> you fuck it up. I've been trying to learn, well, I've been trying to learn this song, obviously, <laughs> for the purposes of playing this guy. I've been trying to learn this song properly. I've always had a really, uh, a, a, a version of my own that I just kind of, I quite often make up versions of my own of things so I don't get copyright strikes. But sometimes you think, oh, I'd like to learn this song properly. And in particular, the solo. I started working on the solo two nights ago. So um, <laughs> I won't have cracked it by this demo. I always leave it way too late to try and learn something. And then I and then I come in and I have to record. So I, I half asked like this bit here. I literally learn. I say learn. I watched a video on it last night. I think it goes like this. There's that bum note. <laughs> Can't play it. It's a simple enough thing, but it's it's hard to to get that right, and all the notes ring without, you know, touching others. <laughs> if you haven't practiced it, a lot of the time I play at home without an amp at all. Most ninety five percent of the time, I'm at, I'm practicing an electric guitar without uh, amping it up. So I wonder if that's. Um, <laughs> One of the reasons I'm so crap. Anyway, those are the sort of things you should practice, really. Fretting. Fretting, that's what it's called, isn't it? Because the pros, well, you know, the, the guys that are like, you know, Tom Bukovac and Tim Pierce, you know, those session guys, that's, that's where you can tell how good, it's one of the ways you can tell how good they are, you know. They do stuff like that. And it's just, it's just a hundred percent all the time, and that's impressive. And that's what, a, that's a good guitarist. Um, the rest of us, we're just, we're doing the best we can. Anyway, um, the guitar's still working, which is great. I don't know what I'm doing. What I'm doing actually is I'm gonna so that's the um, the bridge pickup. Um, obviously, that's without any drive. Let's just try the soul food.
a bit gnarly that with the rat. I was just trying to get it to give me quite a smooth, a smooth distortion, an Alvin Lee style distortion. She's not quite doing it with this setup. Maybe it is. It's not bad, is it? It sounds nice with the soul food. Soul food sounds nice with pretty much everything. Right. Well, <laughs> the volume part on the bridge is still working, so let's see if it... keep pausing mid-sentence. I'll finish that sentence. Can withstand this. And it did, didn't it? It's all right, isn't it? Bum note. <laughs> Bum note. I'm just going to point them out in future, rather than stop and do it again. Because quite often I've just like, oh, I'll stop and I'll do that again and cut it in so that you don't notice. But this is, <laughs> this is reality YouTube. This is what actually happens when people demonstrate guitars. Well, it's what actually happens when I demonstrate guitars anyway. Tones. last night I can't remember it now so as I said I'm I was just going through the Alvin Lee solo in the bluest blues you got this yeah I mean it's just it's just fa fabulous stuff and it's like technically the basic sort kind of blues pentatonic licks that we know or, or you know you can easily learn if you don't know it but the phrasing and the speed is just, you know, on another level. So it's a great, uh, I find it very helpful to st sort of learn stuff like that because you do, some of it seeps in. Um, but unfortunately, as I said earlier, I tend to sort of try and learn something like that a couple of days before I'm <laughs> aiming to record a bit of it. And, and you'll see that I'll be, rec well, I'll, I'm trying to do licks now that I can't remember. And, and later on when I jam, I'll try and put in some of the stuff that I've learned. 
So you'll see a fairly bad, unfinished version of <laughs> inspired by, obviously, you know. And that wasn't part of it, by the way. Um, what well, was? That's the phrasing I was talking about. Can't do it now. That sort of thing. Can't do it. I'll carry on learning that. Look, this all sounds great, actually. The guitar, I mean, not me. <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, that sounds all right, doesn't it? It sounds all right. Um, it's it, it's that far away from being really quite good. Uh, I, I I don't. It is resonating, but I just I think oh, I wish it a bit bit. <laughs> Sustain dies out fairly quick. You hear that? And that might be the difference between um, an affordable guitar and a not so affordable guitar. I have an expensive guitar, you know. Uh, maybe. Anyway, we're going to um, we're going to pop downstairs now. See what I've been up to this week, and then we'll be back, and we'll we'll, we'll do the final final bit of chit chat and waffle about this and then um, and you'll hear it again in the play out jam and with a bit of luck I've had a chance to practice a little bit more so I'll see you in a bit be back soon this is the bit where I get to muck about with some of my other stuff yeah, I've got all this stuff and I don't really get a chance to to play with it very much because each week I'm I'm focusing on one thing, or have been, for like the last two years. So I'll get a new amp, or I'll get a new guitar. It's all about that for a week, and then put that aside and move on to something else. So apart from, you know, taking the guitars home to muck around with them, I, I do rotate my guitars a fair bit, but uh, I don't get a chance to, to play them in anger. So this is a new bit. Uh, started it last week, and... The plan is to try every week and do something a little bit random. It could be anything. It could be a new pedal, an old amp, an old guitar. It could be anything at all. So this week, it's mainly about this amp, which is an old, older anyway, 
It's not vintage, it's just scruffy. I think it's about 95 or 2000. It's a Fender Blues DeVille 4x10 with the Alnico Blue speakers. Um, it's a fairly cheap, cheap for a tube amp anyway, affordable, very affordable. Check them out second hand, they're, they're not expensive. But I know for one that um, Johan Segerborn, I think that's how it's pronounced, raves about these, and says they're um, it's close to the original 59 Baseman Fender, which is why it was on my mind, because last week I did this bit, yeah, this bit here. If you, if you, if you stuck around long enough, it was a long film. They're all going to be long now. But last week we dropped in the new MiG-50, which is based on the 59 Baseman. And uh, I'm thinking about basements. I'm thinking, well, this is close because it's four by ten. It looks like a Fender basement. And Johan did this this comparison at how close they 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 sound. So I'm thinking about it all week. So I'm thinking, I'll get that out. I'll get that out this week, and I can um, include it in this mucking around bit. So we're going to turn it on in a minute, and we'll have a quick listen. This is my 2013 Gibson SGJ. This was when Gibson made affordable guitars. USA made Gibson. It's back then, it was 10 years ago, it was only 10 years ago. This cost me 399 pounds. And it's a proper USA made Gibson. Um, and I love this guitar. So I thought I'd, I thought I'd uh, dig it out and, and play it today. It's been modified by me, by my own fair hands quite a bit. It originally looked like this. It was a kind of an all a blackout thing. Had black tuning buttons, black pickups. Can't remember what the knobs were, probably black. And it didn't have a pick guard. So I've changed all that. I preferred the non-black look, so I changed the tuners. These pickups, I believe this is a Burst Bucker 2, and this is a Seymour Duncan JB. I changed all the pots as well. Changed all the wiring. I think it had one of those PCBs in it, print circuit boards. Yeah, it did. I included this in my SG collection film. So uh, have a look there because I, I think I took a shot of actually the original parts, if, if that interests you. But I didn't play it in that, so I thought I'd play it today. Um, one of the great things about this guitar is, uh, just one of the great things about this guitar, is the neck. It's got a really nice sort of chunky neck and a lot of people ask about Gibson SGs because they they think that they're all got slim necks which isn't true I've got a few Gibsons and I don't think sorry got a few Gibson SGs and I don't think two are the same to be honest with you if if you if you like a chunky neck just shop around you'll find one these SGJs are are quite nice and they've got 24 frets so and that's good. This has got, actually got a maple necklace as well. It's quite a nice sounding... Well, it's actually a lovely sounding guitar. I can't talk for long because this is meant to be a little quick bit. So what we'll do now is we will turn the amp on and have a listen. Right, here we go. <laughs> I got this cheap second hand, this amp. I think I paid... I think it was less than 400 pounds, and I think these can be had for uh, not far off that now, unless the words got out. Right, stop talking. What am I going to do? Incredibly clean. I've got a camera shot so you can see the knobs. So, 60 watt amp, so obviously it's going to be very loud. At the moment, I mean, so I've, I've gone into the I suppose low sensitivity input too. Number one is, number two is a little bit calmer. So I thought we'd start with that. I don't know why, but I just thought we would. And um, clean volume, look. It's as quiet as it'll go. The, it's obviously got um, the presence, reverb, and all the EQs. As you can see, they're all pretty much on noon. A little bit of reverb. It's got a drive channel on this amp. 
you just engage a button and the master volume that you can see there that I'm pointing to, that only works on the drive channel, which has also got a, a preamp stage. So there you go. And as you can see, the master volume's on. Nothing. But... Guitar. In case Michael's watching. That's, that's quite nice, isn't it? That's a drive channel, and people diss. Yeah, they dis, they disrespect uh, Fender tube amps f for the drive channels, like this one and the Hot Rod Deluxe. Yeah, the Hot Rod Deluxe. They've got drive channels, and, um, and people say, oh, they're rubbish. This is all right, isn't it? It's quite boomy. Let's give it a bit more. was on the drive channel with just with the volumes backed off great just quickly now this has gone on way longer than I expected it to. Back to the clean channel. Very loud. I'd like to try this with the attenuator, but I haven't really got time for that today. But let's try it with the soul food. It's loud. Great, you know, obviously loads and loads of headroom as a pedal platform. Turn it up a bit with the pedal. See, don't forget you can. Yeah, you can turn a, an amp up or down just by using the volume controls on any of your pedals, really. I think we tend to forget that. Well, I certainly do.
I think that's enough of that, don't you? So that's, well, that's, I suppose, a new experimental segment for the show. I was talking about last week. I'm, I'm aiming to, yeah, to make it longer, <laughs> to make it, well, hopefully make it more interesting so that if you're not interested in it, if you don't like Epiphone 335s, you might like a Gibson SG or a Fender amp or whatever it is I decide to, to talk about. It's pretty spontaneous. I mean, not that <laughs> this show as a whole isn't anyway, but some planning goes into the main, the main item. Yeah, item, let's call it item. Some planning goes into it. That bit, um, obviously I just have to move some kit downstairs and roll VT and see what happens. So let me know what you think um, each week. I plan to do something significant, a main item and some other stuff, and that'll evolve. As I say, it's an experiment. So let me know what you think. But, you know, the feedback I had a few weeks ago was that you guys, you that are still watching, I mean, if you're still watching, that was for you, clearly. <laughs> this channel is for you. you know? um, the youngsters, most of them, I know that I've got some young people that watch. I know that because they tell me, and I appreciate it very much. But most of the youngsters, they went out about half an hour ago, didn't they? So um, if you're still watching and you're a youngster, this is much better, really, than going out. Going out's overrated. I recommend long-form guitar porn, um, or at least once a week anyway. Fridays normally is a good time. Fridays, Friday evenings, Saturdays, any time over the weekend. You'll find it here. I'm, let's get back to the 335. I like this one. I'm going to say I like this one better than the cherry one that I had over a year ago. For some reason, it's probably just my, my mindset, really. I don't suppose is any different at all to the one that I had. It looks, I like the colour of this. The colour's definitely, and you know, well, you buy guitars with your eyes, don't you? A lot of the time. Um, but it sounded good as well, and I have had a, I've had a decent, I've had a decent enough play on it this week. Um, I've done some, the playout jams coming up, and, and obviously, I, as I said earlier, I was, decided to, to learn, try and learn some Alvin Lee stuff. Because he played, well, I think he played a three-five-five actually, uh, legendary guitar. But anyway, you know, I'm always looking for some vague kind of hook to hang it on. So I went that way, and it was probably probably would have been easier if I played it on an SG, to be fair. But uh, this did the job, you know. It it absolutely did the job, and it miraculously repaired itself which is great. Um, so I got a pretty, assuming it doesn't go wrong again. If it does, I'll, I'm sure I can fix it. But at the moment, perfect working order still. So uh, I, and, you know, I got a discount. So I feel a little bit guilty, but I'm not going to tell them. So, you know, I don't, don't think they watch the channel. They would have, I mean, I'm sure they don't watch the channel because I've sent, I've spoken about guitar, guitar and their faulty guitars enough. You'd think they would have twigged by now and checked them before they sent them to me, wouldn't you? So I'm sure they don't watch. They won't find out. To be honest with you, even without the discount, I think it's, I still think it's fantastic value. £400, £500, it's a lot of guitar for the money, as I said at the top. And um, I wasn't dissing, dissing, I keep using that word this week. I wasn't dissing Epiphone's QC. I don't think it's dropped. I think I've been really unlucky the last couple of weeks and I've had a couple of wiring faults. Um, it was broken, this one, honest, guitar, guitar. But it's not now. But yeah, unlucky. You know, these things come a very long way. They come from China, as you might know. They rattle around in shipping containers and courier vans and God knows where else. So, you know, things are going to break from time to time. I've been really unlucky. I don't think Epiphone QC has hit the skids all of a sudden. 
I just think I've been unlucky. I haven't had any other issues that I can remember with Epiphone guitars. I don't have any issues with the frets or the nuts. Rarely, if any time, the tuners. They're just made at a cost, but it all works perfectly well. So I don't understand when people say to me regularly in the comments, I mean, they're, they're set off. Like, you know, all you've got to do is, oh, you know, this is this had a faulty wire. They go, oh, yeah, Epiphone are rubbish. They always, everyone I've ever tried has been shit. Well, I, I don't get that because I've got loads, you know, I've got loads and I play them and they're fun and they sound good enough. And they're a fraction of the cost of the Gibson counterpart. They might not be as good as some of the competition. And, um, you know, so yeah, you, there's lots of options out there. If you want an authentic 335 though, this is probably the only option apart from the Gibson because it is an authentic 335 and all the others are copies, knockoffs. So th that means something to me because I am one of those people that I'm a, I'm a bit of a, a bit, bit of a snob. I must be, you know, I, I must be. There are some brands, there are a lot of brands, that will probably make a better guitar for for maybe even cheaper. But I'm like, mm, you know. If I if I if I was a three three five man, and I'm gonna tell you now, I'm not really. This is not really my thing anyway. But if I wanted a three three five, I'd buy a Gibson or an Epiphone. Um yeah, I know, well I mean I know a lot of you would buy something else. That is part of the problem, you see. That is that is the pro I am the problem, aren't I? <sighs> yeah, that's that's what. <laughs> Fuck you, Gibson. I don't know what to say. I've I've outed myself. Um, I'm going to go now. I'm going to go and have a lie down and think about what I can do about that. I think this has probably been long enough now anyway. I have no idea what I'm talking about, incidentally. It's been a long day. I'm recording this at the end of a long day because I want to try and get this film finished this week. So not all of my comments um, may have been mine. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> right, look, we'll pick this up next week. I might, you know... I can do anything, can't I, in the muck around section at least. Come back next week, the same time, same place, and um, and we'll carry on. Yeah. Or we'll do something else probably. Yeah. See you then, I hope. Cheers for now. Ta-da. Ta-da.